Hey, mini fish. It's the 16th of November, and please forgive me. I have a lot to share with you guys, and I'm just attempting my best to, to, to relay it to you. This article came up this morning. Apparently, this Da Vinci was sold for a very large amount of money last night. But the point is, is he is one of the old masters. Okay, that's what they're referred to as masters. These all these painters back in the days of Michelangelo and Da Vinci, they were all around the same time frame, the same timeline as the Reformation. Very important. So the other day, I was led to show you guys about what we see in the crucifixion of Peter by Michelangelo and how this reveals the mystery of man how in this world in order to see the kingdom of heaven you need to turn everything upside down and that was the key and they've wanted to keep that key hidden for as long as they can and this again around the reformation period this is when the reformation was building which you can look at that whole period as essentially a deadly wound to the Catholic Church, right? So there's the mystery of man, Peter, on the cross, upside down, right? We see that. We, watched, we saw that in John 21. He tells Peter how he'll glorify him in his death. And then we saw in Matthew 16 where Peter proclaims that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus tells him, that came directly from the Father. That was not from anything but the Spirit of God telling Peter that. Okay, And he tells Peter, your name's Peter, piece of the rock. And upon this rock, see the context there, upon this rock, he doesn't mean Peter himself or what peter says peter's doctrine per se he means on the rock which is jesus which is the profession the confession the spirit of christ in you when you are born again taking yourself and turning yourself upside down born again you're born into this world upside down. You flip that around and you can see the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so he gave him the keys, plural, keys of the kingdom of heaven. And what shall bound? And he's talking about the flesh and the lusts. And then he's talking about the spirit that we live in here on earth. We bind to that spirit of Christ. Okay? So I did a little more into the keys. And as well as in Matthew, we have, and the reason I was led, okay, to this particular one in Isaiah 22, 22, goes back to what we found with Obama. And I'm just saying, this is how things are shown to me. Because you have to remember, we're watching God's plan play out. At the same time, we're watching Lucifer try to hide God's plan and convince and deceive the world into his plan, which is the plan of the Vatican, to hide the keys from us, the kingdom of heaven. 222 days from his farewell. You have to watch that speech. It's boring, but if you understand what you're looking at and listening to, you'll understand. 222 days to the eclipse. Very, very important day in the occult satanic world, okay? And then exactly a hundred days, which is, again, is a big deal in their world, which leads to 322 days falling on the 29th, which is 9-11, which is 29 days after they had their little satanic ritual at the peak of the satanic holiday season, Halloween, in Chicago, the same place he made his farewell speech. Okay? 
So this means something to me. And the keys leading me to Isaiah 22, 22, the key of the house of David, means something. Because when he talks about keys and the Vatican talks about keys, they're two totally separate things. And this is another mural in the Sistine Chapel. Same place that we find Michelangelo's uh, crucifixion. No, this isn't in the Sistine Chapel. This is in the Pauline Chapel. However, the good old final judgment, the beast, that's in the Sistine Chapel. Okay? So that's in the Sistine Chapel alongside of this image right here which was done by a fellow by the name of Pietro Perugino. Same time frame. All of them. They did all these works right at the time where the Catholic Church was literally going deeper underground, taking control and being kind of struck down by the Reformation. Not kind of, it was struck down by the Reformation, but they were still able to fool much of the world. And they went even deeper into their dark council, if you know what I mean. And these painters and masters depicted their little plans right before our eyes. And in this particular image, it's called the delivery of the keys. Now, right away, without going into a masonry history lesson, these images back here, these monuments with the three gates in each, notice three gates. This one has a door in the gate. That all means something. They're out here in this courtyard, and they're presumably doing a ceremony at the Vatican of Jesus giving Peter the keys. However, we got a problem here. There are no literal keys, folks. This is what the Vatican tries to convince people. Although they do deceive people into believing that the key is Jesus, they do not allow their flocks to understand the full context of it. The way that they do their Eucharist and everything like that, folks, I'm sorry. I'm not going to get into it, and I'm not going to bash Catholics, but you Catholics need to understand that you're going about it wrong. I'm sorry. The Vatican is just the beast's headquarters. It literally is. So here's Jesus supposedly handing the keys to Peter. However, if we look, and I mean really look, remembering who we're dealing with here, folks, don't forget who we're dealing with. This is the Vatican. The key, the golden key. What, the, first of all, there are two keys. Here are the keys. We saw in Revelation 1.8, I have the keys of hell and of death. That's Jesus talking there. Okay? And he's given the keys to the kingdom of heaven to Peter, supposedly. Okay? We have this dark key hanging here, and we have the golden key. And it, if you really look at this, what is happening here is Peter is pointing, the key is pointing to Jesus. This key here is pointing down, and it's just hanging by a string, just like a plumb bob. Okay? That's what that is. And this angle right here is 39 degrees. I have the tools to measure these things, and it's 39 degrees. And you would think, well, what's Masonic about 39 degrees? Well, like I said, we have the revelation of God's plan and God's will for us, and we also have the revelation of Satan's workings and his dark doings all around us. The 39 degrees pointing to Jesus is referring right back to Isaiah 22, 22, and the key of the house of David I will lay at his shoulder. He's laying the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. Who is Eliakim? Eliakim is the 39th in the line of Adam. 
Eliakim. David was 34, Jesse 33, and Jesus 77. In the line, the seed of Adam. That's what he's pointing to. He's pointing to the seed of Adam. 39 degrees. Eliakim. Okay? And to just play it out fully, what they're showing us here, along with all this Masonic stuff, they tell us right up front. You see this Masonic compass and squares here? Yeah. And the regalia and all the other little artifacts they love to tote around. Well, this compass is set at 22 degrees. 39 degrees pointing to Jesus. 22 degrees pointing to their plans. That's what that is. And I'm going to try and show you what I mean by that. It can go right back to, again, the timeline of the Obama 222. We can do it there. And we can do it in Isaiah 22. You see where I'm coming from? You see how it kind of cycles around? How they've been hiding God from us? And this is just literally the surface of it. This is so much just the surface of what they're hiding. And if you don't know Jesus, understanding how they hide it right in your face and literally are telling you what their plans are and they're not good, then that should cause you, I would think, to look away from that darkness seek the light it points you to jesus this is an absolutely amazing stuff you guys it really is and i hope that i have put it to you in an understandable way i truly do so god's revealing the mysteries the keys everything and it is jesus it all points to Jesus. Yet, we still need to deal with this deception while we're here on earth. And I just have to reiterate, because it's shown to me, I must just show it to you, that this configuration concerning Obama, the eclipse, the 29th, the whole thing, concerns me. Just saying. Peace and grace to y'all. Any fish. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God 